नमस्कार वी हैव पार्टिसिपेंट फ्रॉम यूएसए वी हैव पार्टिसिपेंट फ्रॉम बांग्लादेश वी हैव पार्टिसिपेंट फ्रॉम मलेशिया एंड ऑफकोर्स फ्रॉम इंडिया एंड अदर कंट्रीज फॉर गिव मी इफ आई फॉर गेट द नेम ऑफ द कंट्री आई एम डॉक्टर योगेश उपाध्याय योर होस्ट द मॉडरेटर I am president of Federation of International Trainers and Speaker and past national president of ISTD. We are very happy to hold this webinar on a very pertinent, very important topic: safeguarding employee during COVID-19, because this pandemic has given it's giving and still continue to give lot of problem for economic activities. I. now this webinar is hosted in association with aci hrm and fbhro federation of bangladesh hr organizations i will say something because it is on istd platform and people know especially for the people who are joining from other countries istd is a national body of hrd professionals we have flagship program called diploma and training development we have certification of trainers and training providers and many training program we have consulting division we have certification we have joined india held with the government of india for certification of employable skills more details you can see on our website www.istd.co.in i welcome you all to this international webinar we have with us our national president mr natraj ji joining us from the city of joy kolkata acha so i request mr natraj dr natraj to say few words and uh, inaugurate the webinar uh, good evening good evening uh, thank you uh, jugesh ji my own and dear jugesh ji our past national president and very uh, senior member of istd uh, istd we welcome uh, mr Mush uh, mr musharraf hussain a former president of uh, uh, bangladesh society for human uh, resource management and also aphrm and also now as a uh, president of the firobi bangladesh federation of um, society for human resource development i welcome the rita uh, ma'am from um, istd on behalf of istd to this program good evening ladies and gentlemen and my dear past president chairman secretary of the chapter and istd other friends we, we welcome all of them in this webinar session being conducted by istd national office in the Thank turbulent you. and uncertain time we istd and feel that we should do some knowledge sharing session for our members and the entire hr and management fraternity we therefore decided to provide a platform to eminent business leaders visionary leaders statutory leaders in india in across the globe we have a many uh, visionary leader has uh, spoken to our this program to share their experience during their this difficult time with this we have earlier many distinguished speakers spoken in this webinar session ist webinar session today we have a very eloquent three speakers musharraf sir or musharraf bhai rita madam and our own dear jugesh ji so we will learn from them the details of today's program or today's session today's session is very good session safeguarding the employee during the covid 19 pandemic the very very relevant because i am uh, working in a corporate where um, what our organization or my organization is doing i am little bit uh, telling now after covid or in between the covid the world is called new normal so we are maintain the full new normal to max is our day to activities sanitization channel sanitization day to day activities of sanitization is going on cleanliness and others is going employee every employee you get the might know that government has given yes. 70% Uh, attendance nowadays so my organization yes. follow the 75 percent uh, air mark and we are doing we are doing uh, that uh, that activities apart from that we are global organization and every day 
we are making every activities for their employees to top down communication what is going on what is going on across the india in the morning we have in a session to enlighten the our activities our cleanliness our sanitization process even our day to day activities day to day basis we enlighten communicate to the workers and my staff and others i can learn more from that so i i will not speak more i learn from all of you that what activities is going on how to save that the employees because is it is it is aware that that 12 crores uh, 12 crores employees has lost their job many organization are doing their salary cut yes. but in my organization i am not doing anything so this is the safeguard we have in a we have in lots of labor laws labor plethora of labor laws how to protect the employees in this covid 19 how to how we cannot re, cannot retrench our employee but we can run the office or run the factory with efficient and efficient manner how to how to the this small employee 70% employee we can maximize our production that we will learn from jugesh ji and musharraf ji and others from today's learning so safeguarding the employee it is a very important in this turbulent and uncertain time sir you enlighten us the indian industries or globe industries how to share how to make the activities so that organization will be make some profit or employee also be safeguarded in that so thank you very much jugesh ji for your for your uh, for your support to ist the national council national office to make this arrangement arrangement and i would request all the nc member who are interested to make this webinar to keep in touch ourselves and safeguard the industry safeguard the society and safeguard our mother india that is the main learning session for today's from all the members thank you very much for my chapter chairman chapter secretary past president who have participated there and we will be grateful for this uh, wonderful session today and i hope everybody will enjoy this session today thank you jugesh ji thank you very much um, thank enjoy you. this thank you very much jugesh ji and we hope today will be enjoy very very good program yes. and very good yes. uh, session today thank you very Ho hopefully much. Uh, most welcome and we must thank you but we i will just add one thing you said mother india i will say mother earth <laughs> whole planet vasudham kundambakam we believe whole world is our family so welcome to the people who have joined just now uh, friends we are witnessing unprecedented situation today this is the first time in the modern history that we are facing such a large scale of economic crisis and you know characteristics or nature of this crisis is it is not caused by the toxicity toxicity and intrinsic behavior of the economy not by economic factor but this crisis is created by the factor which is external to economic activity economic sphere we can say or you can say economic surface it is just strange you may appreciate the economy was doing very well was doing pretty well employment was there companies were doing very good business but after the sudden explosion of covid 19 there was a grinding halt in economic activities this pandemic has activated the pause button the economic activities like production supply chain management services all came to a grinding halt one aspect one nature of this virus is it has treated all nations equally all nations and also the society sooner or later they came to know that there is only one way one strategy to save their people to save their men power and that was to keep them at home and keeping this mind because we do not have medicine 
we do not have vaccine the only way out was to have lockdown the nation after nation they restored to lockdown and because of that lockdown no man power was available another character of this virus is the migratory in correct nature it has traveled from one country to almost all countries of the globe all nations are having impact in varying in nature i would say the nature of our world economy is that world economy is interdependent interconnected and twinned no economy of any nation is an isolation it is not insulated from the economy of all we depend for so much of raw material from other country we are sub exporting raw material but it has come so the interdependence and interconnected or twin nature of uh, our economy because of that there is a lot of problem in this people are locked up they are not going out there are certain industry which are badly hit and where you know the people are required to meet face to face the strong contact like airline and they will continue to face the heat of this virus the restaurant motels and hotels and the us people like us the trainers the education technology has come to our rescue up to some extent and thanks to technology that we are today face to face virtually and there are some industry they are doing good work and they are like medicine food hospitals biotechnology and uh, power sector in that power sector electricity is the one electricity domestic electric consumption has gone up because we all are at home and doing something not sitting idle at at home and all gadgets are operated in electric so electricity generation has also doing good hospitals are doing as we understand from the behavior of this virus we could understand what is the peculiar behavior the government the nations they carved out some strategy they brought out some sop so the impact of virus is impacted and some of the nation they have started economic activity they have started their factory even in india also china was the first to start but now in india also we have started and we are learning how we can have economic activity by maintaining social distancing maintaining work hygiene uh, at the place and keeping those things in mind okay, how to have a fantastic understanding and bring out some strategy develop some sop and also to learn from the various countries we organized this webinar main objective was that to learn from others how they are doing so today we have two eminent panelists very learned having vast experience and expertise in the field of human resource management we have miss rita sui the founder of asia hrm joining us from hong kong and we have mohammad musarraf hossein ji i don't think he needs any introduction in india <laughs> when i was in bangladesh i told that if mr musarraf contest the election in nipm i study probably he will be able to <laughs> win the election <laughs> so he is so not popular. going to do it <laughs> <laughs> he is so popular well known so we are two panelists they really deliberating with them we are learning with them of course indian uh, this our president has highlighted i will also share and to help me i have two co panel a co host i would say we have uh, now cs come ms surbi wadera upadhyay from amchi mumbai 
Surbi is master's in business administration with diploma in, of, in training and development from ISTD. She has many certifications to his credit and now happiness coach from Mumbai. And his source from his smile, she is happy and uh, teaching happiness to others. Another co-host with me is Gautami Chattopadhyay. I would say Dr. Gautami Chattopadhyay. She is faculty in management, also a good trainer. She has just submitted thesis waiting for Viva. So in few days or week, we'll have Gautami daily helping me in conduct of this webinar. And before I request Ms. Surubi Padhyay to formally introduce Ms. Rita Sui, and welcoming her for her speech. I request all the participants to write their question because we have question and answer session. So I request them to write question and answer session in the Q&A box, not in chat box, with your name and also the place from where you are joining. And also name of the panelist, if you can write, from whom you want response. With that, I welcome others also who have joined late and welcome both the panelists from joining from Bangladesh and uh, Hong Kong. I, I also welcome my past president, NC members, other members from the Bangladesh, Malaysia, US and other countries. Thank you very much for taking down time and joining us for this webinar. So I request Ms. Survi to introduce Ms. Rita, and then Ms. Rita can take over. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Good evening, everyone. All the panelists, our guests for tonight, and all the participants. Uh, uh, so much of humble words, sir. I'm, uh, I'm not that uh, big, as uh, sir said, so many certifications and all. Just in a mode of learning, as uh, learning is the only thing that can make us grow. Uh, coming back to introducing our panelists for tonight, I welcome Ms. Rita Sui from Hong Kong. She is the founder of Asia HRM, an Asian human resource community, currently uh, admin and HR director of a conglomerate in Hong Kong, over 20 years of regional HR experience, working in different multinational companies in Asia. She's a trainer and a coach of John Maxwell team. She graduated from the University of Hurdles Field, UK, with a major in HR and has a master's degree in business administration from Southeastern University, US. Uh, a little bit about Asia HRM. Uh, the mission of the community is that they are an Asian uh, HR community whereby they help HR practitioners resolve their work challenges in caring atmosphere. Their vision is to be the most reliable leading voice in the field of human resources in Asia in five years time. The values, passion, excellence, and nurture, P-E-N. Asia HRM is dedicated to achieving the best for the professional and personal advancement of Asian-based human resource professionals in caring environment by providing a forum to share ideas, best practices, and solutions within the community by organizing all value added HR activities. They share to care and uh, they care to share. They have sharing platforms and different social medias. So let me put my hands together uh, virtually for uh, Mr. Rita Sui. Uh, welcome Ms. Rita and it's all yours. We would really like to have your opinion on the subject for tonight. Welcome. We, we offer you virtual floral welcome. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for the wonderful introduction. I'm a bit uh, 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 flattered by your nice introduction. So my name is Rita Choi, founder of HHRM. It's really my pleasure here to share with all of you on what my view on the topic today, which is safeguarding employees um, uh, during COVID-19 pandemic. For me, just one word. It's very simple. How do we safeguard our employee? Just one word. Do you know what the word is? Just the word care. Okay. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So you can see the wonder of this word. With this word, 
I would like to, to give my three points on how to safeguard our employees during this pandemic. Firstly is, in order to show our care to our employees, we have to care about their physical health and safety. The physical one. I'm pretty sure that uh, a lot of life, say for example, for the physical health, a lot of companies in different parts of the world have adopted similar measures, such as um, giving vitamins to their, to their employees to eat, and providing them with health food and so forth. And also they might also expand their healthcare coverage for their staff. They also organize a lot of their virtual uh, mental health gathering with their experts. They also have some kind of wellness checking and so forth. So a lot of different measures are actually are being taken place, are being arranged by the employers or the employees in order to show their care for the employees. It's also very important that they need to keep the employees healthy, right? In order for them to perform their work. Another thing is physical safety, right? In order to keep them stay away from the coronavirus, we adopt this kind of policies, not just for the Ms. Rita, just a yes. minute. I, 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 now you are okay. Your voice was actually. Now you are okay. Continue, please. Okay, okay, okay. Now, now okay. I think okay. I have, I have muted myself. That's why your voice was not coming. So now you look oh, okay. at me and I continue. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Now. Okay. So, so in terms of the physical health, a uh, physical safety, right, for the employees, I think a lot of companies in the, in different part of the world. Uh, will have similar measures and also is also promoted by their respective governments, such as social uh, distancing policies and also allowing their employees to work from home and in order to stay from the from coronavirus and also in terms of meeting together, instead of having everybody meeting in the same room, we also adopt this kind of video conferencing uh, facilities, just like what we are doing now, having the Zoom session. And, in, and also, if we need to go to the office, then we, we, we take the temperature of our employees and also um, have a thorough cleaning of the workplace and so forth. So we adopt different kind of measures in order to keep our employees physical, physically safe in order for them to perform the work. So it all comes from the word care, okay? So besides having this kind of physical care that we have shown to our employees, we also have to take care of the mental care. That is the mental safety and health. When it comes to that, I can think of another two words that always pop up in my mind. When you think of this mental uh, uh, safety, and health for employees. How do we how do we we make our employees feel safe in a work environment? We are we're all talk about job security, right? I think in the opening remark by the president, he mentioned that there are few, a few quite a number of companies in India actually have closed down. So it implies to employees that job security is really their concern. But here I would like to make use of this opportunity to urge all the participants, if you are somehow, you can make an impact to your company, you can make an impact to your business owner. I will urge all the participants here to go back to your company, to the owner of the company that sadly of is the last resort. It's only it's the last option that they should exercise. We all now undergo the undergoing this economic downturn. And but it's also a great opportunity for the employer to show their care for the employees. And with this opportunity, I would like to share with you a story, which I, I might have shared on other occasions. And I heard of this story from a very famous author, Simon Sinek, who wrote the book. And this story actually is a real one. And it happened in, in the time of uh, uh, Lehman Brothers, I think it's 2000, 2000 2009. 
at that time, there, there it was economic downturn. And that US company also experienced Ms. a Rita, lot of... Yes, can you hear me? Voice. Yeah, we have a lot of issue in the voice. You cannot hear me? Not clearly. So maybe oh. some uh, disturbance that either some, uh, there's a air which is like creating issues. So just uh, try once more. Let's see if that happens again. Okay. okay. Now can you hear me clearly? Now can you hear me clearly? Now, now, now okay. Now okay. Okay. Now okay. Okay. So let me carry on. So let me carry on with my story little bit, about little it. Little bit louder, madam. Little bit louder. Mm -hmm. Louder, okay. Louder. okay. Louder. Or, or, or you can uh, change the mic position, please. Mic position, if you your mic. Uh, the position of my mic. Okay, okay. Yeah. Now I think is it better now? No, uh, no, it is better. No. Okay, okay. So let me carry on with this story. Okay, it's a real story that happened in two thousand and nine at the time Lehman Brothers. At that time, the well, actually the we were also experiencing economic downturn. And there was no exception to this U.S. company. So that company actually lost 30% of their business. And then and one day, they have all their management came together to, dis, to discuss their way out on how to have a turnaround of the company. And they came up with a decision that they should let go I feel, a number of the staff. When the owner heard of that, the owner objected to this idea. And he, he came back saying that we, we want our staff to be productive but we don't look at the head count, we look at heart, heart count. The heart count really tells. So he sent a message to all the employees saying that we are now undergoing this economic uh, challenge and they have lost 30% of their business. And at the same time, they have a budget. They, they need to, to fulfill their budget, the saving budget of uh, two, by saving 2,000 million, two, 2, 200,000 US dollars by the end of the year. And instead of letting go anybody, he's, he's going to keep everybody in the company, but he will need every one individual of the company to take five days of annual, no pay annual leave in a month. When the staff heard about that, they were touched because they knew that the company is not going to let go any one of the staff. Instead, they started discussing among each other. They started discussing that, okay, I'm quite well off. I'm volunteer to take more than five days of the no pay leave. So in the end, you know what the result would be at the end of the year? They were able to achieve more than what would they were supposed to save. They end up saving 300,000 US dollars and their, their staff relationship has improved a lot. So it implies that the staff with this kind of care, the staff were able to go extra mile to help, to help the company, to have the turnaround. So I just want to make this opportunity to urge every one of the owners here. Don't let, when we are not in an economic difficulty, but we also have to take care of the staff by keeping them safe, by letting them to feel safe when they work in the company. As all of you may know that, feeling safe is fundamental on the staff of the company. If the staff doesn't, doesn't feel safe, they will Sita, never be able to... Actually, uh, yeah. again, again, there is the same problem. I think uh, you have headphone, if you can put headphone. But my headphone doesn't work very well. That's why I don't use headphone. I usually do it this uh, Otherwise, way, but... other, now it is okay. When you speak slow, it is okay. Otherwise, uh, okay, uh, so I better see, speak slowly then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So in so what I'm saying is that we need to show the care to our employees. That will do wonders to our business result. So I would like to make use of this opportunity to urge everyone of OSCM or any human resources professionals who can talk to the management that staff like off is only the last resort. When there are other ways that we can save the company, let the staff think of ways for them to, to save the company, but not letting go any one of the employees, unless there are some performance issues. Okay, so just so keeping them, so keeping them safe and healthy mentally is very important. Okay, and with, and I would like to go to the third point, which is also important. Without this, we are not able to keep our employees safe physically or mentally. That is a clear communication between both parties, between the employers and the employees. 
As you know that under the, especially during this period of time, economic downturn, employees will have, will have a lot of concerns. They have a lot of uncertainties, especially they know that the company might do something about them. So in order to mitigate this kind of stress and concern, let them focus on the business. We need a clear communication from the management to the employees by telling them that what the, what the company situation is and what is the plan of the company, what is the future direction of the company and how the employees are helping them to cope with these changes and to resolve these challenges. And for the employees, when they, when they receive this kind of clear message from them from the management, they will, they will help. They will also know very well what the company situation is and they will come up with their ways and means to, to achieve the business goals. So clear and, clear and transparent communication is the key to keep the company, to maintain the business continuity. So it starts with the word care. With care, we're able to safeguard employees by means of having the physical and mental health and safety. And with the clear communication, we can work this thing out. So that's all for my sharing. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, it was very interesting actually. Uh, see, uh, you have emphasized on the communication, not only taking the action, but also ex communicating to the employee. So they get some sort of confidence. Yes, there is someone who is taking care. So thank you very much. Now I'll call upon Ms. Gautami Chattopadhyay to introduce our next speaker, Muhammad Musarraf Hosenji. Ms. Gautami. Thank you so much, sir, yes. for your kind words as well. Thank you. It is a great honor for me to introduce Mushara Hussain, sir, who needs actually no introduction, who has received many accolades and is internationally renowned HR professional and speaker. He is recipient of uh, numerous awards nationally and internationally, including the Lifetime uh, HR Achievement Award 2013 from BSHRM, Lifetime Achievement Award 2017 from the World HRD Congress, and the Global HR Leader Award uh, 2017 from Malaysian Institute of Human Resources Management. Sir so has earned his master's in continuing education major in HR leadership and OD from the University of Calgary, Canada. Recently, sir, is the head of human resources management, ICDDR, Bangladesh. Sir, is the founder president of a Federation of Bangladesh Human Resource Organizations. Also, he is the past president of the Bangladesh Society for Human Resources Management, BSHRM, and the Asia Pacific Federation of Human Resources Management. Sir has served as the board member of the World Federation of People Management Association from 2014 to 2019. He is an editorial advisory board member of the South Asian Journal for Human Resources uh, Management, SAJHRM, which is of its first kind of journal by the Griffith University Australia and Sage Publications. He has also served as the chairman of the newly introduced Asia Pacific Federation of Human Resources Management HR Professional Award Committee and uh, as the member of International Jury Board member for Great HR Leaders Award. Sir is also the adjunct professor of human resources management of, uh, for the MBA programs with some of the leading universities of Bangladesh. And he is regularly delivering lectures uh, with uh, different national and international uh, platforms on HR resources. Uh, he has delivered uh, keynote uh, presentations in over 50 national and international conferences and seminars and is regularly participating in the talk shows on uh, television relating to uh, emerging issues of HR uh, development and management. So this is uh, really wonderful to have you, sir. Today, we all are really delighted to have this opportunity to listen to you. Over to you, sir. 
Thank you very much. Uh, we, we offer you virtual plural welcome, Mr. Sir. Yes, Sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it has been a great pleasure for me to. I have such a wonderful uh, introduction and kind words about myself, even uh, during this time. So I'm very grateful to ISTD for inviting me, particularly the uh, present president, uh, Dr. Nataraj Ji, and uh, past president, uh, Dr. Yugesh Upadhyaya, and others distinguished uh, uh, people of ISTD. Uh, my special honor to my good friend, Rita, uh, for joining here and uh, today topic is the how we can safeguard our employees during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic time. Am I audible to everyone? Yes. Yes, okay. you are very clear. Okay, so it's next clear. As during my introduction mentioned that I also teach in the university, as you know, there are some problem with the teachers. They want to speak, they want to deliver things, and, and they want to also share things. So I, I have developed actually two slides, uh, um, which I have taken uh, help from um, International Labor Organization and UNICEF. Uh, they are both are consulted. And you know, the employees are the greatest asset in any organization. And Without the employee, you cannot do anything. Your competitiveness, your profitability, your branding, image, everything. And that's why we call HR professional, that all resources minus human resources, nothing remains in the organization. So this is the pandemic time and only the human resources are affected. If you see, only the human resources are affected, all other resources are not affected, but organizations are not able to perform. This is the, uh, this is the testimony what I have just said that all resources minus human resources equal to zero resources and nothing will happen. And this is the situation. So this is the very important resource and we have to take care and safeguard these resources uh, during this pandemic situation. No pandemic lasts forever. It will go, it will over, but this human resource will be uh, helping you to uh, actually survive in the organization and they can uh, exp uh, expand their capabilities in order to make the organization successful. If you allow me, sir, I have only two slides. No uh, problem, yes, sir, go ahead. I, I will share those two slides with you. Yes, go ahead, please. Can you see my slides? Yes, yes, very clearly. Very clear, okay. Thank you very much. I have only eight points, not more, nothing more, nothing uh, less. Uh, Rita has covered uh, white and uh, I don't think that I can add any more, but still, since I have prepared, uh, let's see. So first thing, you see, this is the pandemic time and we have to safeguard our employees. And in order to safeguard, uh, we have to make sure that we follow the national advices, uh, authority, national authority, what they advise, uh, the health ministry, health directorate, what they advise. We communicate those advice to our employees and make sure that they are complying. This is very, very important because we, most of the organization, we are not the expert from health point of view. So we have to rely on international community, national uh, uh, government authorities uh, and make sure that our employees are uh, you know follow and we monitor this and many organizations they do not have the policy uh, of how to you know um, you know survive in this kind of situation uh, particularly the health uh, uh, awareness policy um, uh, you know occupational safety and health so we have to, this is the time to review our workplace policies to ensure that we have sufficient support to our staff and the families. Why I'm saying the families? Because if family, uh, uh, family is a big issue for the employees and that's why many organizations, they consider that family friendly organization. In my organization where I'm working, uh, we are very much concerned 
not only with our employees, also with our families and dependents. So that's, that's, we have to, if we do not have the policy, we have to incorporate the policy in line with the national policies, in line with the international best practices and introduce that. And all, we have to follow all the good practices when implementing the policies. And we have to have a social dialogue. And each country, there, is, there are national level law, international level standards, we have to follow that because we, as an organization, we are we cannot play in isolation. We are not a separate. So we have to uh, follow all the national guidelines, national policies, international standards, and accordingly we have to make sure that uh, uh, we are following and all of our employees are following this policy. This is the time, with all respect, uh, as a chance for uh, discrimination between men and women, between uh, different uh, you know, uh, segments of the people. Uh, so we have to combat any discrimination against any social stigma uh, and supporting uh, them. So we can do a lot of uh, training, webinar, and in order to make our employees safe, in order to keep our employees safe, and we have to have a reporting mechanism how our employees are or, uh, doing. If there is any problem, immediately we can go forward and try to support. So that we have to make sure and we have to ensure, particularly in this uh, world, uh, discrimination is very common, but this is a very, very serious time. There is no scope for any discrimination due to sex, ethnicity, or religion or any other things. So we have to make sure everybody uh, are safe and everybody uh, take care of uh, everybody's uh, well-being. We have to adopt the family-friendly working arrangement to give the workers um, uh, greater freedom and flexibility to carry out their job. And remember that when I'm saying that family-friendly, most of the employees nowadays are working from home. And there is a chance that uh, you are working 24-7. This is not possible. You have a family. So we, as, a, uh, as an organization, we have to make sure that we are not penalizing the employees because they are working from home. So there should be a time frame uh, for, the, for the employees to work from home. And other time, of course, people will definitely respond to the emergency. But we, let's not make uh, the 24 seven the working time because people are working from the home. So this is a new situation for most of the organization. We have to also uh, create some policies so that we are not penalizing uh, people's uh, and employees their family life and there are a lot of working parents we have to take care of the about the children and and, and, and family members also so uh, if we need to really take our employees to the office make sure that they have that uh, your child care center uh, is open uh, children can be safe there uh, and 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 their proper transport is necessary uh, because children are more vulnerable, uh, they might be af affected uh, uh, from, uh, uh, from any kind of uh, infections. So if we need to take our working parents to the office, uh, we have to also take care of their children and strengthen the occupational safety and health measure in the organization. We have to make sure that we are providing the safety equipment, uh, PPE, uh, other safety equipment, uh, uh, hand sanitizer and other things in the office uh, so that uh, people are, uh, are safe in the organization. If there is any issues, uh, uh, then we can immediately address, make sure that you have sufficient supplies of the PPs uh, and, and the safety equipments in the office as well as in the vehicle. And we have to also encourage employees to seek uh, the appropriate medical care or provide medical care from the organization if it is possible. Uh, because employees are also very stressful situation. You see, even my own brothers and nephew, they were infected. Uh, my son is working in the hospital. He's very vulnerable. So these are giving the stress to all of us. And remember that organization has also responsibility to help us how we can cope up with the stress. I have seen one question from someone that how we can overcome the stress. Actually, organization supervisor, they may help significantly by providing necessary support and help in order to uh, you know overcome those kind of stressful situation 
because this is a pandemic situation. 213 countries are affected. Uh, most countries are affected, and nowadays the South Asian countries are uh, infecting very, uh, very uh, you know significantly. I have seen the highest case in uh, today in India, uh, Pakistan, and also in Bangladesh. So uh, things are getting worse. So this is the time uh, for panic and stress. So organization has the responsibilities uh, to work for the employees. So these are the eight points I have jot down uh, in order to really uh, you know open the discussion so i would i would like to stop my sharing so now uh, this is the uh, this is the time so thank you very much uh, i have uh, done my presentation and now i am open for uh, the next uh, discussion or any question thank you very much actually it is not eight point say hamare yahan bolte gagar mein sagar hindi mein you have you have put c in a uh, mud pot, small pot. So your eight points cover many aspects, all aspects. And one point you are reminded, family. Actually, when I was studying, if you see five uh, fundamental concept of OB, oh, human as a whole. So we are not only interested in his skill, hands and body, but we are equally interested about his family. Yes, his family, family, alone. yes. family is a big issue. His, his wife is there. See, you can't say you help with your wife come for duty. So employer has to be interested in all ground yeah, and good practices. So now, uh, without uh, going for this thing, we'll take, because many questions have come. Of course, there are no questions, chat box. So I request uh, Ms. Surubi and Ms. Gautami, you can read question, you can unmute yourself and direct questions, because a lot of questions are there. Yes. Yes, Gautami. Yes, sir. There are many questions. So, uh, uh, the first question was uh, from Imdad, uh, from Bangladesh. He has asked how we can safeguard employees where it is a question to sustain the company. What are al the alternative solutions you will suggest to safeguard the employees? So, anyone among the panelists can... Uh, if they yeah, uh, if you allow me, I can take it. Uh, yes, from sir. Bangladesh. I think if I understood his question, that when organization is uh, has a huge problem with the uh, fund flow and cash flow, uh, how they will you know safeguard the employees. Actually, in my presentation, if you have seen that I did not uh, mention anything about money. Most of the safeguarding issues I have touched upon is you know, you know, emotional, and you know, the, in, in the form of awareness, dissemination, uh, providing support and other things. You see that I understand, and Dr. Notras has mentioned that some organization reduce the salary percentage, is not paying the 100%. But that is the reality, because if organization cannot earn, if they do not, do not have the fund flow, probably getting the full funding support may not be possible. But the point I have mentioned, the safeguarding the employee from uh, possible infection, safeguarding the employee from uh, uh, for, uh, following the national policies and guidelines, safeguarding the employee from the, uh, 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 from uh, stress uh, uh, during their work, uh, and, you know, treating the employee uh, with respect and dignity, and uh, you know, feeling for the employees, for families, and other things. Actually, salary is one component. I am not undermining that we need salary, but you see. Many of you are HR person here that actually this time we need salary, but we also need a lot of other support. I need continuation of my job. I need support from my supervisor. I need support and guidance from my, uh, from my organization. Actually, when it is safeguarding, this is not only money. This is many other things. And money, of course, a, a big factor. And of course, if organization can afford, if they have the ability, they will definitely and continue to the salary support. Many organizations, including my organization where I'm working, will full salary support. But I understand that many, um, not all organizations can provide the salary support. But other points I have mentioned, those are possible and that can also a great contributor for the safeguarding the employees. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Yes, should we? Next question, please. Uh, thank you so much for that uh, reply, sir. 
the next question is what are the issues you face while dealing with the moral of the people in this pandemic situation while managing remote work especially the employee engagement okay um let me share this with you um it happens in hong kong but i think it's quite common right uh, i think a few months ago because in hong kong we have started working in the office a few months ago where we are very heavy the lockdown a lot of employees actually were working from home but they at the same time they also went hiking and we all we okay we saw all this when uh, they 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 just show their pictures on facebook So at that time, a lot of people actually started say, saying that how come how would we control the people from hiking while we are we are having we are supposed to work from home. So at that time, we we just thought that okay, the company was to set to to come up with some kind of measures, making sure that they are really work from home. Some come up with the objectives like that by set by 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 setting some objective for them to achieve every day or every week, and that's the way to do it. But for me, I think it's very difficult, right? it depends on the business nature and also depends on the on the attitude of the employees but i think uh we need to i think at the end of the day we need to to tell the employees clearly what they are supposed to achieve even even though they work from home and then after that they as long as they can achieve their their their, their what they are supposed to do i think it's fine with that i'm not sure if i answered your question Ms. Gautami, you can take another question. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, someone asked from uh, this that uh, my company is not run in good manner and efficient for my job description. So I had hundred percent duties, but uh, for my boss it is not like that. So what should be done regarding to this concern? बहुत सबॉर्डिनेट रिलेशनशिप दैट इज व्हाई आई आई थिंक डॉक्टर उदय आई वाज ट्राइंग टू आंसर एनीवे लेट मी टेक इट इफ दिस इज अ रिलेशनशिप इशू देयर इज अ सेइंग इन एचआर दैट पीपल चेंज बॉस नॉट द जॉब सो दिस मैटर्स एंड दिस इज दिस इज कॉमन इन इन मेनी कंट्रीज दैट i give 100% still my boss is not happy uh, and, and 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 this is a situation and that's why uh, in last week i have i have given a webinar uh, on a relationship of supervisor and supervisee many of you have probably seen and that i uh, i try to you know mention that both supervisor and supervisee both has the responsibility for developing the relationship if the problem with the supervisor supervisee has also some responsibilities to convince and motivate the boss and boss if boss has a problem then uh, if supervisee has a problem then boss in a better situation so we have to work together you will not find any environment where you can work without a boss boss will be always there so it is a good luck if we have a good boss but in most cases it is very rare to get a good boss and that's why many people nowadays and becoming entrepreneur uh, they are becoming their own boss so it 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 is a it is a huge issue in most of the country uh, and uh, and blaming by uh, each other supervisor blames supervisee and supervisee also blames supervisor but i fully agree with the uh, person who asked the question that uh, this is a situation where uh, supervisee has less thing to do uh, but we can try but if not then this is one of the reason of changing the job so if you are a very comfortable person if you are very capable and if you cannot improve the situation my suggestion very straight foot suggestion and uh, this is not the only organization in the world or the country uh, if you cannot fix the problem we have to have a fight hmm. fully agree yes i think that uh, there is one question i'll read for uh, that is from dr yusuliza from uh, Malaysia, how the performance appraisal care the employees? Do you make changes because this because of this pandemic? So performance appraisal care the employees. So it is for caring. So what changes, if any, warranted? What you suggest? So are you talking about the objective that we have set in the performance review? 
that is also I, i think because now we are under pause so i don't think it will be right time for averaging people because now objective setting cannot be there yeah, yeah i think the company has to to handle it um flexibly meaning that they have to base on the actual situation to make the adjustments on their performance objectives and so forth and so i so is that was it the did i answer the question yeah yeah please okay mm -hmm. next question should we yeah The next question is um, how the employers can make work life balance keeping business running on the other hand keeping the employees healthy as well as job security and not cutting the pay uh, okay since uh, in my point i mentioned about family friends and work life balance you see uh, warren buffett he mentioned that uh, if you are given a choice Uh, between choosing the work and life, which one you will give number one priority? And most people, almost everyone, uh, mention life. So, if organization does not care about work-life balance, people, you are not getting uh, the full contribution and support. So, how to manage this work-life balance? And particularly in this uh, pandemic situation, we usually work eight hours, nine hours in the office, and we spend about 2 3 hours also uh, uh, on the on the way on on transport because many many of the country you have a huge uh, uh, traffic jam but nowadays when we are working uh, from home does not mean that uh, we are uh, we are fully giving the time to the family because we have to also work and rita has mentioned about performance things still we have to responsible for our delivering our performance so i think there should be a clear guidelines there should be a clear guidelines for the three parties guideline of the management how to deal in this kind of situation and how to manage the work life balance guideline for the supervisors and guideline for the employees and that has to be agreed upon like one of the guideline could be that during night unless it is emergency you cannot send an email or you cannot call as an example but you see nowadays because of very easy approach we send the email anytime and from the employee that could be a guideline that even if you receive something if you see that if it, it is not urgent don't respond this is your time night time you have a children you have your family you have other issues so i think a proper guideline uh, should be prepared for three parties for organization for the supervisor and from the employee and we should save that and that should be agreed upon because end of the day if you keep me busy 24/7 next day i cannot perform it is a loss for the organization if i report that i'm sick then what you can do so that's why we have to be rational and make sure realize that employee has the family although they are working from home but still they need to have a very you know designated time for the family particularly the night time if it is not the uh, not the night duty uh, person so and guideline is necessary because many supervisor they are work alcoholic they don't bother what you do they can they can ask you to do work even in the midnight so if there are guideline from the organization then supervisors are bound to do it so that's that's i think and uh, and many organizations are doing that Thank you. Come in. Come in. I have a sir. I have a question to Jugesh Upadhyay ji. Yes, please. Indian context, because you might know that that the five to six lakh migrant employee uh, as on date. How to protect this migrant employee in this COVID time? What will be their job security and others? So the migrant employee, how will be? How, what is their safeguard? yeah that seen it was uh, for my concluding remark that we have uh, seen the thousands of workers when there was total lockdown trains were not running they started going back to back to their native places on their foot with their luggage on their back now the government of india and state government now they are making because up government has announced they are making a commission they are listing the workers with their skills 
you know, BRO, Border Road Organization, has already taken two, three trains of workers to the, you know, mm -hmm. the Ladakh area. They have gone. So governments are taking play, uh, taking uh, action in this issue. And my suggestion is that we have to make a roster of these workers, migrant workers, and their skill inventory, and call them. Because now migrant workers are not registered anywhere. They are not in our So now, because this pandemic has given us many lessons, not one, many lessons. So now we have to have a particular type of a commission has been appointed, daily having website, and certainly the electronics, the IT will come to our rescue for mobilizing the workers wherever there is demand, and they will go. Because a lot of changes you will see in the system. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you, Mr. President. See, I, I was telling when this question was put up, there are many types of supervisor, many types of workers. There are workers who will not like to work unless they see the face of their colleagues to near and dear and also face. They would like to have instruction from the boss immediately. They don't work unless they are inside. So there are some certain remote champion. There are certain some team champion. So now as a supervisor, we have to see what type of personality a person has and devise the work for him. If they are remote uh, champion, they can work in remote. And same way supervisors. The relationship, the metric is very difficult to explain in a shorter time. Thank you. Next question should be your Gautami, uh, if we are noted down. Gautami, are you going ahead or should I? No, you can read you can, you can. You can. Okay, thank you. So, uh, it was mentioned that good practices can uh, uh, do wonders. So can you please elaborate uh, what kind of good practices and if you, uh, any of uh, any one of you can list some of the good practices for the employees in the pandemic situation. I, I think I, I mentioned in my, in my uh, sharing yeah. that uh, uh, having staff layoff is the last resort of a company. If every company really adopted I'm pretty sure that the employee will go, go extra mile to get the things done and also to try to achieve business result for the company. So that's why I would also like to take the use of opportunity to urge every one of the business owners to think about it before they, they take other actions. Thank you. You can read, should we you go, go ahead with the questions? No problem. Okay. Um, yeah. The next question is, how will you handle the employee proba uh, probation assessment yeah. and confirmation during pandemic? This is from one of the participants from Bangladesh. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, I can take it. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole performance appraisal and issue during this uh, pandemic, because we, uh, India and Bangladesh, particularly the uh, uh, these two countries, we are habituated with the face-to-face -face meeting and uh, doing the assessment uh, uh, or face-to-face -face discussion. But this is a pandemic time, and if you have a very vibrant performance management system where objectives are set up with the with the KPI, with the with the deliverable, then I don't think it is an issue. When a new employee join, what we do after the orientation of first week and second week, we sit together and we develop the uh, you know, um, a work plan for during the performance, and we give that these are the these are the objectives given to you, and these are these you have to uh, you know uh, accomplish and uh, and achieve during the probation period, and these are the requirement for fulfilling your probation period. And if we can set up very smart kind of uh, objectives with that sufficient KPIs and indicators, I don't think it is a problem. As an example, I give you if 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 we hire an HR officer. And if we give that, you have to, you know, review and streamline the, uh, you know, reference check system of the organization. And if that person can deliver that, no matter who's working from home or whatever, if we can uh, see that uh, that person deliver with the proper, uh, you know, uh, expectation and uh, and the proper uh, proper uh, cap, uh, fulfill the uh, KPI and other things, then I don't think any problem. And I tell you one thing very vibrantly: we have to. We have to give up our old practice. We have to be able to work from home. And this is the time we are getting a lesson that after the pandemic situation, organization will desperately thinking 
that not everyone need to go to the office many mm. people would be able to work from home uh, forever and many people will require to go time and again not every day maybe two days three days so we have to redesign the whole performance appraisal systems in order to be able to measure the performance so and we have to shift our mindset from attendance based management system to result based management thank you brother we have dr anna sahib bonde he has asked well there is no money with the company so people are project company they are not getting projects they are not having money then how to safeguard the interest of employee that is the sort and i will answer because the each government they are trying to give some package to the industry and this pandemic will not remain forever now we have to carve out the policies we have to bring the uh, make the strategy to safeguard to curtail it and to live with that the economic activities have already started in almost all parts of world i think we will be able to come up with this crisis even the supreme court is struggling for the answer on this issue yes sir yes sir be yes, next sir. next question if you have sure, sir oh, yes last question you make it Because yeah italy 11:30 for miss rita okay <laughs> okay so uh, this i found very interesting and i i uh, in case uh, the panelists can answer this because this is uh, about the companies also and uh, uh, the uh, the society also yes please the question says how and what cohesive policies between corporate and society should be there to face the situation and make it a better place to live partly answered by mr musarraf and uh, mr yeah, yeah okay uh, i think i have touched upon in, in my presentation that many organizations they do not have the policy because we never face this kind of uh, pandemic situation and i have given some guideline but i can tell you that this is the time we have to revisit our workplace safety and health policy we have to revisit that what kind of uh, you know support and awareness program we need to do i tell you many organization they do not even have a fast aid box in the past if you have a little cart you have no, nothing so now this is the time to uh, sit together and consult the national uh, policies consult the international level of standards and consult the unicef and other uh, policies and we have to develop a policy i tell you uh, developing this policy uh, require a mindset change only many organization they consider that where we will get the money many of the issues you don't need money your mindset and your attitude towards the employees is sufficient and that's why i think uh, we have to sit together and we have to put aside as a small amount of budget in order for the employees uh, uh, safety and health like the time uh, you have to no choice you do not have a choice but to uh, you know you know supply the hand sanitizer supply the you know mask and other things so this is a time we have to uh, rethink uh, and i in one of the presentation i mentioned uh, two weeks ago that if we revisit the whole thing we can significantly reduce the operating cost of the organization because you don't need a huge office a large office because you can reduce the office size by you know redesigning the work system and allowing people from work from home and when people are not going to the office you don't need to pay for electricity you don't need to pay for the uh, water and you don't need a, a large space and uh, and all the snacks and other thing so comprehensively if you have a good intention and redesign the whole system Uh, within the same budget it is possible but i tell you one thing we have to change our mindset uh, towards the employee to help them to realize that these employees are the great source for the success of the organization these employees are the great source for the competitiveness of the organization thank you so just uh, in addition to this question uh, someone has written that a lot of employees are treated with disrespect and face discrimination because someone in their family or a building is uh covid 19 positive how can we stop this can you repeat i missed your question so uh, they uh, it is said that a lot of employees are treated with disrespect 
and they face uh, discrimination because yeah. someone in their family or in their building was covid 19 positive so uh, when you say that we have to change the mindset so as an hr uh, fraternity how can we what can we do to stop this kind of uh, discrimination in the corporate uh, you are absolutely right that uh, when somebody uh, today i have seen that one of the covid patient in bangladesh uh, he ran out uh, ran out from the hospital is <laughs> a today news he he ran out from the hospital and hang because he was not able to um, absorb all this discrimination and all this talk so my suggestion would be you see that this is a, a situation like if one of the family member are infected others should support like i tell you in my building where i stay one of the retired chief engineer he passed away for the covid what we have done we have given lot of support and we have locked down uh, his apartment and two other neighboring at, uh, apartment and the committee uh, providing all the support that you don't need to go out we'll give you all the support so i i strongly feel that uh, family community society organization has a, has a responsibility you you can be infected you see many country there are 20 30% infected how can you avoid it so so and and there are some painful uh, incident i have seen that the uh, the uh, the children are not attending the barring program of the uh, parents when they passed away so this is happening but with the precaution you can attend it's not that you cannot go but then you see what is the affection and what is the love and respect towards the family so i think there are ways and means that you with the protection you can go but if you are not attend the funeral program of your uh, own own father or mother so what the message you are giving to your own children what they are learning from you so i think this kind of discrimination should be stopped and that stopping should start from the family from the society and of course in the organization if one of my colleague is infected so instead of supporting that colleague should i discriminate and put the person in an isolation without giving any support impossible we are human being we are the social elements we cannot do this like thank you we we cannot get rid of this pandemic unless we have a vaccine but it has to develop because once uh, dr kiran vedi she was in one of the webinar and i will repeat her words she said covid is an attitude you have to have attitude towards it how to curtail it and how not to allow it to affect you see today i was listening young guys who are more strong in their immunity they should ask senior citizens of their society any requirement go to market give bring their bag keep it on the door give a ring so this is the attitude we have to develop to help the society and there are acts in india we have not act rule act is enforcement this is declared crime so we'll take last question should be you can select one question then we have other formalities also and uh, we'll try to answer these uh, questions online if people sir i have it. a question sir yeah, i have a question go, go which ahead. is a little little uh, different uh, what about the academic institutions they are exercising and pressurizing the teachers mm. and the fa faculties to resign this is uh, one kind of issue which has been uh, you know two questions were there i have collaged this so if one anyone can faculty member i also mm -hmm. teach in the university maybe if rita allow i can answer this question uh, because this is uh, that what about the uh, you know academic institute asking and the teachers to resign uh, am i right the question is yes, like sir. yes sir they are yes. pressurizing as well as uh, with work and they are asking the uh, faculty members. yeah i tell you one thing that uh, uh, i have seen in the media and the news uh, in the and the facebook also that uh, many uh, education institute because of the less registrations of the students uh, they are paying less and some of them are firing the teachers and asking them to resign so this is happening and you see this is unacceptable behavior this is unacceptable behavior uh, because people are rational if there are issues of salary and money then we can sit together work together but somebody is working for such a long time and suddenly you said that that you resign 
during this uh, pandemic time. So remember that you are you are in the uh, working in the society. If you ask or force someone to resign, that person will definitely share this with other people, and that will significantly adversely affect uh, to the branding and reputation of the universities. Nothing remains confidential. I tell you, once a, once a practice, good practice or bad practice, that uh, that and that you know spread out like anything. So my suggestion would be uh, instead of asking them to resign or quit or fire, I think uh, we can. There are different, many different ways. If there is you no know, classes, no you know uh, you know. Uh, uh, student registered so there are many ways you can have a, a leave you can have some kind of arrangement of uh, half time working uh, or working from home or take some uh, gap still continuing that uh, you know you know the uh, employment because you see by firing an employee or asking employee to resign uh, you are you are not only uh, firing the employee you are giving a trouble to the whole family mm effect and those will be spread and this will go against your organization education institute particularly the private universities and in bangladesh and, and in india you have to survive with the reputation and confidence of the people if your bad practice spelled like anything in the in the society uh, you it will have adverse effect uh, during the uh, admission and other things so my suggestion is that don't don't go for uh, don't go for any uh, any shortcut way. This is the shortcut way. Let's be strategic and think long term effect before making any decision. Thank you. So thank you very much for answering those questions. I know many questions are there, but we have limitations of time. So friends, uh, we have seen the magnetic character of this COVID-19. It has started from one town and reach to every corner of the world. So it can be concluded, we had fantastic debate. So it can be concluded if the virus is somewhere in the world, it is everywhere in the world. Yes, sir. Because you cannot take it granted that it will not spread. So total elimination is the key. Unless there is a total elimination of virus, we cannot feel safe. But we cannot sit idle. Like there were questions, people are checking. So we have to start. And how we can start? We can take help of technology. One thing was brought out by Ms. Rita and uh, Mr. Mohammed Hussain. Both were communication is the key. Make the policy, make the strategy, communicate to the people so that they are confident. If in the environment which is created by our employer is safe to their health. Unless we get vaccine or medicine. We do not have any technology. Can you put your hand or thumb and you will get a report that you are corona free, go ahead. Unless that we get that type of gadget, we cannot be 100% sure. But we can create a smart workplace. We can, like in India, we have Arogya Shetu, we can develop app. So limiting people in the workstation. So when the people are more than the permissible limit, some audio visual signal, and when proximity can be traced. And also that some of the industry in India, they have started taking undertaking that I am not feeling anything. I am not having any symptoms. So we need to adopt technology, communicating the people, also going to their families. If we are here, you also take care. See, along with technology, we need to train our people because everybody will not. See, communication and training is most important. How to take care of themselves, how to take care of their colleague and society also. So communication is, with these input, I would like to thank you all. And I would like to read one sloka from Neeti Vachanani. In India, we have Vasudai Kutambakim's whole world is our family. And there is a Sarve Bhavant Sukhune, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhatrani Paschantu, Makascha Dukha Bhavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavav
may all be very happy and free from all diseases may all perceive goodness and none suffer from grief lest there be peace 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 and before i give chance to dr joshi for putting vote of thanks i would like to make another announcement tomorrow at 9 o'clock we have a another webinar for celebration of international yoga day so i request all of you to join that because yoga is one yoga is adding value adding health yoga means addition in in uh, yeah. so you make yoga day very successful and get benefit because this is the one of the strategy to keep covid away from you make yourself healthy make your lungs stronger by breathing exercises so do join us tomorrow we have wonderful yoga session by arogya ashram a lady who is ma in yogic science ma in philosophy she will be conducting and i invite so on my personal behalf i thank both the panelists and my co host and the all the attendees yeah but i request dr joshi to put formal vote of thanks thank you uh, thank you dr padhya natraj ji aap kuch bolna cha rahe hain nahi 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 sir aap bol dijiye Uh, as a customer it is my duty on behalf of national office to pay my thanks to give my thanks and regards to the especially to the panelist reeta from asia acharam and uh, mohammad musharraf hussain uh, indeed sir thank you very much for making this session lively absorbing and interacting one because we learned a lot of new things during the session and i think uh, you focused on the kind of competencies and skills are required for tomorrow's office because the traditional uh, uh, offices where everybody should be available in the office now how do we work from home new guidelines are to be formulated new interaction is to be established with our staff we should be honest and transparent with them that in the tough times the tough covid times how are we defining or redefining the ways so a lot of questions also for the times to come indeed i am thankful to my national president dr natraj ray uh, for uh, welcoming everyone in this program for std and uh, uh, surubhi and gautami for beautifully conducting and co-hosting this uh, event thank you and uh, i indeed uh, thank uh, my past presidents by ob mm -hmm. members daniel kurian all the nc members of istd uh, salil chatterjee ji uh, mukesh jain from delhi uh, mr banwet was uh, on mr banwet naipal singh rashmi hebalkar pk sharma sp verma a former ed all those panelists uh, attendees who have joined this program from bangladesh hong kong malaysia and other countries who yeah. we could not uh, decipher but anyway uh, thank you very much for joining and as uh, dr padya has invited you for this uh, yoga program tomorrow please come in your yoga attire because you will be performing lot of yoga exercises so come in the track seat or track suit or purja patama whatever it is and we will be having a one and a uh, half hour of yoga session do enjoy tomorrow is the yoga day thank you indeed thank you once again thank yeah. you all thank you very much